Hello everyone, this is Connor from Team 1814D, and I want to discuss about some macros in my robot. Um, since Zach did it, I'm like, sure, I'll do the same. So let me go ahead and, I don't even think you can see, I'm just going to start the program up. And you can see that that arm automatically goes, goes back um, using PID of the encoders of the motor right here. All right, so to start everything off, the intake is controlled by these two buttons right here. So if I hold this button right here, there we go. Now, kind of like what Zach's doing, I'm doing exactly what he does as well. So it goes in and you can see that when the first ball is in, it goes a little bit slower too. And that bumping that you see right there is to help make sure that the ball would go into the, um, into the puncher um, without any problem because there's times where if you intake um, the ball would like fly out if I stop so what happens is that it stops for just a couple of seconds to make sure that the ball would go in once the drivetrain is at a good enough speed but I always drive my robot a little bit too far from its limits so during the first round of eliminations I wasn't able to intake one of the balls and it just flew out um, for, but for the most part, it did work. Um, so, alright, so now let's bring the second ball in. And it properly indexes it right there. Now, the best part of having an ultrasonic right there is it will sense if the ball would, um, if the second ball would jam up. Um, because of this part right here, if, if two balls go above and don't go into the puncher, it would actually jam up right here, right in front of the ultrasonic instead of actually going out. So, let's see, let's get two balls in. Well, it seems like it did that properly, but you can see that the ball fixed itself right there. There is a limit switch there, as well as a limit switch, where is that second limit switch? A second, not a limit switch, uh, a line tracker right here and a line tracker right hard to see right here yeah right there um, there's one two three line trackers and one ultrasonic right there to make sure that the ball will get properly indexed and both balls don't leave the robot as much as possible um, as I said it didn't work a hundred percent um, when you're driving very rec recklessly, but for the most part it did. So, bring it up, and it fixes it itself. Um, let's try bring up that scenario of the balls jamming. Let's see if I can do this. Like that. So, you have two balls that jam up like that. I hold it and it automatically fixes itself. It's re that is really good um, when there's times when uh, the intake is spinning 127 and there's two balls right next to each other. Um, because sometimes the second ball pushes it up, um, kind of like in that scenario, um, as I showed, and it automatically fixes that. Okay, so for the puncher, let's turn this around. The Puncher motor is running 100 RPM, which means that it will shoot really, really um, far and will have a very consistent angle since there will be more rubber bands, which will have uh, less of a chance of causing any uh, problems. Um, the angling mechanism is running a one-to-one. -one. The motor is right here. It's not here, it's actually on a, or, is there a way to turn on the camera, on the uh, flashlight, no, but you can see that right there, there's an axle, right there, there's an axle, and it extends across, and I'm having a shaft collar with a screw onto it, um, let's, let's see if I can lift this up. So you can see right there is the angling mechanism. You can see very closely that there is a screw that 
has uh, that zip tied onto the one vise in which there's a shaft cover with the screw that screwed onto it. So that means that it will um, have less slop and allow um, more torque without, um, without breaking. Also, we had a problem with balls getting stuck under here, so during worlds I put zip ties on it. So if the robot tips forward, um, the ball won't just fly under like what has happened during qualifications at Worlds. Um, for shooting, so for the buttons are, we have this right here to intake, this to outtake, but there are also these two buttons right here. And so let's see if I can hold it with my, my phone with my feet. So as what Zach said, he has shift keys. I have them as well. So it's intaking, outtaking, and if I hold this one right here. Um, wait. Oh, crap. Oh, that's a good, that's nice. That's really nice. Um, my intake jammed, give me just a second. All right, I'm going to fix this in a bit, but for now I'm just going to show um, how the puncher works. Let me get this fed below. Get this indexed, boom. All right, so of course we have intake, outtake, and of course I dropped that ball. And you can also tell that there are haptics on this controller. So if it's properly indexed, this starts vibrating, and if there's a jam, it will um, vibrate and longer. Um, and longer vibrations, so if it jams, it would be longer vibrations. If it's indexed, it would be a blips. Um, that helps me get main, that would help me get um, information as to um, about the intake so I can fix a problem if there ever is a problem. So, for a punching mechanism, let me, let me release. All right, as I said, intake, outtake. Uh, I have these two shift keys right here. If I hold this one right here, if I press this one right here, it will shoot top. It will shoot top, and you can also hear the intake going too. That's because it wants a ball to be intaked into the puncher. Um, it uses the sensors to feed the ball into the puncher instead of time or anything else to make sure that the ball is properly intaked. Um, it will try to intake as much as possible before the puncher shoots. So I hold this. So I hold this one right here. Shoot it high. Shoot it high. I press this one right here. So I hold this key. If and while I'm holding this, if I press this button, it will shoot high, the high flag in the close range. And if I press this one while holding this one, it will automatically angle and shoot um, at the same time. Because this is 100 RPM, I can make it both angle and and turn the motor to shoot at the same exact time to make sure that um, I get the most um, time efficiency of the shot. So if I want to double shot, I can just hold this one. I can just do that. Boom. Now to do the far range, I hold this one right here and it does a PID control loop to hold its position using a potentiometer. Where is that potentiometer? You're right here, aren't you? Yes, you are. There's a potentiometer right there that will have the position of the angling mechanism. So if I hold this one, it will automatically use PID to hit that um, the top flag in the far zone and this bottom position, because this shoots so, um, since this has a relatively straight shot, um, not it's not perfectly straight, but it's pretty close. Um, it will be it's down. Its low flag is the same exact low flag for both positions. So, so you can see that the low flag is the same exact one for both for both positions. So, so that's how I do my um, 
Oops, that's how I do my uh, far, my high and low flag um, in the two positions. So if I'm in the close range, I hold this. If I'm in the far range, I hold this. And it shoots really, really consistently in the far field because I spent like a good um, three, three, four days trying to get that angling PID tuned for it and it works so well. Um, the cap manipulator. Well, first of all, if this is meant for scraping as well as it is meant for wedging teams off, um, so it's uh, it's kind of like a multi tool, is what people say. So if I hold, the, if I press this button right here, it automatically goes forward for wedging teams off of the platform. But I never really use that because um, it just doesn't have enough leverage. Um, not exactly enough leverage. It's too much of a risk factor. All right. So whenever I want to intake caps, I press this one right here. And you can see that the puncher automatically goes forward. This puncher is perfectly fine with dry firing. Um, nothing does get damaged. But the main reason why I do that is because um, the pull, um, when it's here, um, when this puncher is reeled back, this puncher is just so close that it actually w does affect this angling mechanism right here. It really does suck, but it is what it is. So it fires when I activate the intake. Um, I hold this. This is um, from Starstruck. Um, I've done this during Starstruck, so I'm kind of used to it. So I hold this one right here, and that will intake the cap. And if I hold both, it goes up. And if I um, release the bottom one and just do the top one, it uh, scores it. So I do this, this, this. Hashtag Puncher Gang. I'm part of Puncher Gang now. Dab. Bye.